Since if the average so-called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. We've got to get smart. We've got to organize. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man, or he can only get clothes from the white man, or he can only get food from the white man. History Corner. I am your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co-host, Miss Catherine Blake. And hello, everybody. You may hear me call her Miss B. <laughs> she just said hello, everybody. <laughs> All right. I can hear you good and clear now. I hear you too. Yeah. Is that nice? Okay. All right. Passing it on. <laughs> Today, I will tell our story about Marshall Bass. Reeve. Was he the true Lone Ranger? You tell me after you hear our story. Amen. And Miss B will tell our story about three black women who today are at the helm of the Democratic Party, also known as DNC. Is it Democratic DNC? It was the Democratic Party Convention. Yeah, Democratic National Convention, mm -hmm. DNC. You're right. Okay, so we're going to pass this on. Right now, I'm going to tell you the story about our story about uh, Marshall Bass Reeves, who is a black hero, Marshall. Oh, God, I have a mess. This fan is blowing. Okay. And this is, comes from Old West Legends. Mm hmm. Marshall Reeves was born to slave parents in 1838 in Crawford County, Arkansas. And John should have a picture of of uh, um, Bass Reeves <laughs> and the Long Ranger up there. Okay. Oh wow! You put both of them. Okay. Yeah. Because we comparing this. Right. Because you got some things I want you to add when you was talking about the mask and. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Uh, Bass, let me, okay, he was born to slave parents in 1838 in Crawford County, Arkansas, down in my home state. Bass Reeves would become the first black United States Deputy Marshal west of the Mississippi River and one of the greatest frontier heroes in our nation's history. Y'all hear that? He was one of the greatest frontier heroes Hero. in our nation's history. He was owned by a man named William Reeves, a farmer and a politician. Bass took the surname of his owner, which is what slaves did at that time. Working alongside his parents, Reeves started out as a water boy, boy until he was old enough to become a field hand. And that is the way they usually do it. They have the little uh, slave girls or boys bringing water to mm -hmm. the slaves that were working in the fields. A tall young man at 6'2 with good manners and a sense of humor, George Reeves Williams' son later made him his personal companion when Bass was older. When the Civil War broke out, Texas sided with the Confederacy and George Reeves went into battle taking Bass with him. It was during these years of the Civil War that Bass parted company from Reeves, some say because Bass beat up George after a dispute. <laughs> now, okay, George, now, if y'all have forgot, George was his, uh, was, no, that was William. Who is George Reeves? Okay, William's son. That was uh, William's son who uh, was the actual owner of Bass Reeves, William Reeves. That was his son, George Reeves. 
See, I got to get it clear in my mind because I was saying, what is this? I just read it. But anyway, sometimes I get, out. I'm not going to say that. I was going to say a senior moment. No. No. Okay, it was during these years out of the Civil War that Bass Pride and Company from Reeves, George, some say because Bass beat up George after a dispute in a card game. Others believe that Bass heard too much about the, the freeing of slaves and simply ran away. In any event, Bass fled to Indian Territory where he took refuge right. with the Seminoles and Creek Indians. While in Indian Territory, Rick Reeves honed his firearm skills, became very quick and accurate with a pistol. Though Reeves claimed to be only fair with a rifle, he was barred on regular basis from competitive turkey shoot. That means that man was good. He was very good. And nobody was beating him, so they barred him from it. Freed by the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 and no longer a fugitive, Reeves left Indian Territory and bought land near Van Buren, Arkansas becoming a successful farmer and rancher. Mm -hmm. A year later, he married Nellie Jenny from Texas and immediately began to have a family raising 10 children on their homesteads, five girls and five boys. The family lived happy, happily on the farm. Back in those days, people were having babies. Mm -hmm. That changed, <clears throat> I think starting in the early 60s. Birth control came about. <laughs> mm -hmm. However, Reeves' life as a contented farmer was about to change when Isaac C. Parker was appointed judge for the Federal Western District Court at Fort Smith, Arkansas on May 10, 1875. At the time Parker was appointed, Indian Territory had become extremely lawless as thieves, murderers, <laughs> and anyone else wishing to hide from the law <laughs> took refuge in the territory that previously had no federal or state jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So that means they were running around killing folks. <laughs> It was a wild, wild west. west. They <laughs> well, like we sometimes say in Flint, now I gotta get out of Dodge. <laughs> One of Parker's first official acts was to appoint United States Marshal James F. Fagan as head of some 200 deputies. He was then told to he was then told to hire. Fagan heard of Bass Reeves' significant knowledge of the area, as well as his ability to speak several tribal languages, and soon recruited him as a United States deputy. The deputies were tasked with cleaning up Indian territory on Judge Parker's order, bringing them in alive or dead. Mm -hmm. Working among lawmen, oh, let me skip some now because it's quite a bit. Uh, Though Reeves could not read or write, it did not curb his effectiveness in bringing back criminals. Before he headed out, he would have someone reading the warrant and memorize which was which. Mm -hmm. When asked to produce the warrant, he never failed to pick out the correct one. That's all right. An imposing figure, always riding on a large white stallion. A uh, white if stallion. You can see, <laughs> and there's a picture right next door to, uh, right next to Bass Reeves of the Long Ranger. Okay, the Long Ranger is riding a white stallion, mm -hmm. right? John, finna say so. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Paris and John. That's all. Okay, uh, let me get back to where it was. Where was it? Oh, always riding on a large white stallion. Reeves began to earn a reputation for his courage and success in bringing in or killing many desperados of the territory. Always wearing a large hat. Mm -hmm. Look at the Long Ranger he has on a large hat. Reeves was usually a spiffy dresser with his boots polished to a gleaming shine. Mm -hmm. Look at that picture of the Long Ranger. 
He was known for his politeness and courteous manner. So was the Lone Ranger. Now, some of y'all young folks might not know who the Lone Ranger is, but some of us older people do. Because at one point in time on television, this is all we had to look at. Mm -hmm. We didn't have like what y'all got today. Y'all got a variety of different movies, pictures, series, all kind of stuff that y'all got at y'all fingertips. We didn't. We didn't have a, like, maybe three channels. Mm -hmm. If and that. The Long Ranger was on it. Yeah. Okay. And black and white. Ah. Then I'm give my thoughts because I always felt the, the white, the large white stallion. Okay, let me leave it alone for a minute. I got I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Uh, however, when the purpose served him, he was a master of disguises and often utilizes aliases. Now, the Long Ranger didn't do this that I know of. He was just a long ranger. I didn't never see him in disguises. Did you ever see him? No. Put on disguises? Sometime a period of Well, uh, the, the long ranger did have a disguise. He wore a black mask. Would you explain that black mask? Well. we getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, oh, I'll let you go on and finish. Too. Okay, because we might be getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, all right. About the black mask. Well, you said a disguise, so. Okay, well, go ahead and tell about the disguise. Well, the disguise was the black mask. And it is said that the black mask on the whole, they did not want to tell this history that the Long Ranger was a black man. So they had a white man portray him with a black mask. Ah, oh, so the black mask represented the black man? Ah. Uh, that a big question mark? Yeah. Okay. Then we gonna leave that alone because we really can't answer that. Right. But we can put it in our minds. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because we know this this listen to this. Yeah, back in those days, yeah. Back yeah, in those back in those days. Because back in those days, even when singers came out with some uh a hit on a song mm -hmm, or a nice mm -hmm. album, they didn't put the black singers on there, they would on the album cover. On the cover, they would put white people. Yes. Okay, so a lot of things happened back those in those days that supposed to be put we were supposed mm -hmm. to be put on there but we're not. And also that the long you never knew the long ranger's name. No. All you knew was the, the long, long ranger, ranger on a white horse with his Indian companion. Whose name was Tonto. Tonto. Which means fool in Spanish. <laughs> so every time he called Tonto, he was calling, fool, come here. <laughs> Lord, that was something. We really went through some stuff of them programming our mind, actually, mm -hmm. with the television. Because uh, the Long Ranger, actually, as a little child, he was my hero. Because mm -hmm. he always got the bad guys. Well, he you know, now, in. Bass Reeves brought in over 3,000. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Desperados. <laughs> okay. Sometimes Bass appeared as a cowboy, farmer, gunslinger, or outlaw himself. Like I said, he wore disguises. Mm -hmm. He always wore two coat pistols. Look mm -hmm. on the picture of um, the Long Ranger. But forward for a fast draw. Look at the picture. Mm -hmm. Ambidextrous, which means he could use mm -hmm. both uh, hands. He rarely missed his mark. He was a marksman. So was the Lone Ranger. Yeah, he was a and could shoot a long way. Yep. Leaving Fort Smith, often with a pocket full of warrants, Reeves would often return months later, hurting a number of outlaws charged with crimes ranging from bootlegging to murder. Paid his in fees and rewards, he would make a handsome profit. He sure did. Before spending a little time with his family and returning to the range once again. Mm -hmm. Now, I, the Lone Ranger, I'm not sure if he went out on warrants to, to go and capture uh, bad guys, but he did. Mm -hmm. uh, capture bad guys. Yes, he did. And I'm not sure if I remember him uh, killing 
any of them either. Do you, John? Do, uh, are you old enough to remember the law? I'm, I remember br briefly. I mean, the story I heard was like he was supposed to be a Texas Ranger. They were the only ones that survived the uh, shootout somehow. I forget who they were fighting. It was a native tribe or it was a band of outlaws, but he survived it. He, you know, he he was near death's door and he came back, and that's why he rode alone. That's what story I heard. So I mean, that's but he that's what all I heard. He ride alone. He well, had Tonto. Well, Tonto, yeah, but <laughs> that, that's all I saw is weird. It's like he's got a sidekick. So I mean, why do you call him the loner? Well, they were before? friends. They yeah. were friends. Well, Just they, like uh, uh, Bass Reeves grew up on, in, in with the Indian. He didn't grow up with him, but he lived with them. Yeah. So did uh, the Long Ranger. That's how he became friends with Tonto. Well, I heard too. You know the expression that Tonto uses, like "cut the hay," was supposed to mean the greedy, and actually, it's supposed to translate it's a good day to die or something like that. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I don't know how they got away with that stuff. I mean, I'm sure there was people back then, more likely made from the native tribes and stuff, would have said that's he's speaking gibberish or that's really inappropriate to say that at this point. I, <laughs> I don't know how they got away with it. So yeah. Well, let me get through with this story. So let's <laughs> get, through, get through with hers because it's such an interesting story. Because I'm trying to show, was the law was this really the Long Ranger or was it Bass Reeves? I mean, you know, we know that uh, white America took a lot of things from black people and made it like it was their own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But our story will tell the truth of certain things. Okay, but I just want to read this last little part. Let me see if it's the last part of this his story. It's a very interesting story. Yeah. Uh, 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 after he, you know, would get his money, he would go home. One of these stories he told up arriving at upon arriving at the home, he told a tale to a woman who answered the door that his feet were aching after having been pursued by a posse. A posse is a group of men on horses chasing a man or a couple mm -hmm. of outlaws. I don't know if y'all know that stuff today. <laughs> Do they have this kind of stuff on today? Well, like a gang. Gang is different though. The gangs don't be up on horses. <laughs> Yeah, but they still a posse. They all together. They a posse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I haven't been pursued by a posse who had put the three bullet holes in his hat. Okay. After asking for a bite to eat, she invited him in, and while he was eating, she began to tell him, uh, this is funny to me, of her two young outlaw sons, <laughs> 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 suggesting that the three of them should join forces. She was going to try to put her sons together with him. Uh, he was acting like he was weary, and she consented to let him stay a little while longer. As the sun was setting, Reeves heard a sharp whistle coming, whistle coming from beyond the house. Shortly after the, women, the woman went outside and responded with an ans answering whistle, two riders rode up. <laughs> These are her two sons. <laughs> Taking, uh, talking at length with her outside. The three of them came inside and she introduced her son to Reeves. After discussing their various crimes, they just didn't know who they was talking to. <laughs> the trio agreed that it would be a good idea to, for them, all three of them to join up. Back, bunking down in the same room, room, Reeves watched the pair carefully as the, they drifted off to sleep. And when they were snoring deeply, handcuffed in the pair without waking them. When early morning approached, she kicked the boys awake and marched them out the door. Followed for the first three miles by their brother, who cursed Reeves the entire time. He marched the pair the full 28 miles to the camp where the posse men waited. Within days, the outlaws were delivered to the authorities, and he collected a 5,000 reward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the high points of, 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 of Reeves' career was apprehending a notorious outlaw named Bob Dozier. Yes. So Bob Dozier was known as a jack of all trades when it comes to committing crimes, as they covered a wide range from cattle and horse wrestling to holding up bank stores and stagecoaches to murder and on and on. Because Do Dozier was unpredictable, he was also hard to catch. Though many lawmen tried they to get apprehend him. this outlaw, none were except successful until it came to Reeves. Dozier eluded Reeves for several months until the lawman tracked him down in the Cherokee Hills. Mm -hmm. After he refused to refusing to surrender, Reeves killed Dozier. 
Gunfight. That was a gunfight. A gunfight on December 20th, 1878. So he won in the end. And he gave, it, but before he died, he told Reeves, you're a great man. And he said, I'm going to give you my pistol. Oh. And he gave him his pistol before he died. Okay. He uh, said, no other man could have got him. But Bass Reeves. But Bass Reeves. On January 12, 1910, Bass Reeves joined his ancestors. Though he was buried in Muskegee, Oklahoma, Homa, Muskogee. Muskogee. Muskogee, Oklahoma. The exact location of his grave is unknown. Over the 35 years that Bass Reeves served as a Deputy United States Marshal, he earned his place in history by being one of the most effective lawmen in Indian Territory, bringing in more than 3,000 outlaws mm -hmm. and helping to tame the lawless territory, killing some 14 men during his service. Reeves always said he never shot a man when it was not necessary for him to do so in the discharge of his duty to save his own life. Now that's something, 14 men out of 3,000? Mm -hmm. And he, he and it was only because he had to save his own life. Right. He didn't do it just to do it, he was saving his own life. And he turned his own son in, he brought his son in too, his oldest son. Did he? Yes, he did. He said he was a lawman. And he upheld the law. The white horse that the Lone Ranger uh, rode on, on the, it was a TV series. The name of the horse was Silver. And he would always. Hi, ho Silver! <laughs> Hi, ho Silver, yeah. Uh, uh, he was played by uh, Clayton Moore and Jay Silverhall as Tonto, which, as I told y'all earlier, which means in Spanish, fool. Mm. And that's so funny to me because we would be watching the uh, the series of, of the Long Ranger, and you would hear him calling Tonto, and he was calling him "Boo, boo, come here." That's our story of Bass Reeves. Now you tell me, was he the Long Ranger or not? That's up to you. I gave you some facts, and it's up to you if he was the real Long mm -hmm. Ranger. That's uh, Miss B said the, the black mass. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to put a black man on there as a long range, so they put a white man and put a black man. Black on there, mask. which was supposed to, allegedly was supposed to uh, represent a black man. Mm -hmm. I so guess. sometimes you have to read through the lines. Something when little children is looking at it, it's a whole another story. Yeah, because we just I, he was my hero. Oh, long ranger <laughs> is all you know. <laughs> Anyway, that's our story about Bass Reeves. Now, Miss B is going to tell you a quick story about well, these three black women who are at the helm. Well, um, as everyone noticed last week was the Democratic Party convention. There were uh, three black women at the helm. Uh, black women are now playing a pivotal role in the 2016 Democratic Convention standing in the shoes of Fannie Lou Hamer, Shirley Chisholm, and Barbara Jordan, all who on their own rights made history at the Democratic Conventions, elevating black women voices and leadership. It was uh, about 40 years ago Michelle Obama addressed the nation continuing the legacy of the late Congressman Barbara Jordan who was the first black woman keynote speaker at the Democratic Convention. All right, now one woman, uh, well this is also what happened. When Florida Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz stepped down as chair of the Democratic National Committee on the eve of the Democratic Convention in the wake of a scandal involving the DNC leaked emails that suggested party officials preferred Hillary Clinton and not Bernie Sanders. Representative Marsha Fudge of Ohio stepped in to fill that void. That was Marsha Representative Marsha Fudge. But where she she's a representative from of Ohio. Okay. And joining her at the helm was native Louisiana Donna Brazil, and all of us know Donna Brazil, who acted as interim Democrat Democratic National Committee Chair, and Lee Doherty, 
who was for the second time CEO, CEO of the convention. We have three black women running the convention. Melanie Campbell, president of the National Coalition of Black Civil Participation, told which is the black-oriented website for NBC. I didn't know there was one. The Democrats went on to make more history by nominating Hillary Clinton as the first woman to receive a major party presidential nomination. Clinton, however, is not the first female to run for the highest office in the United States. Amen. According to the Smithsonian's, the number of women that have sought the office tops 200, which includes Representative Shirley Chisholm, who ran in 1972, and the former Senator Carol Mosley Braun yep. in 2004. I think she went out with a scandal, though. Well, she didn't make it, you yeah. know, yeah. But something happened with uh, Carol Mosley Brown uh, that it was something that went down. It was kind of a scandal that happened mm -hmm. back in those days. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she's doing today. Well, we'll look it up and see what she's doing. Yeah, because this is the month yeah. of women's suffrage. Mm -hmm. So on our next program, we're coming with women. Suffrage, right? Well, these are some women that are making the women back in those days pretty proud. Yes, they are. <laughs> I think we got how much time we got, John? I think that's it. Got about four minutes. Okay. Now I want to just tell you a little bit about Donna uh, Brazil. Her name is Donna Lise Brazil. She was born in December, on December 15, 1959. She's an American author, a ac mm -hmm. academic and political an analyst. She is a member of the Democratic Party and became interim chairperson of the Democratic National Committee in July 2016. Just a couple weeks ago. She has briefly served as the interim chairperson for the DNC in the spring of 2011. And why I'm telling you this is to let you know this woman is not a rookie coming up. No, here. she's not. She was the first black American to direct a major press presidential campaign, acting as campaign manager for Al Gore in 2000. Amen. Okay. Donna Brazil, and she did come to Flint, and I did meet her. Okay. Uh, Marsha L. Fudge, representative of the 11th Congressional District of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Congressman Marsha L. Fudge is a committed public servant who brings a hard-working problem, solving spirit to Congress and to the task of creating jobs, protecting safety, protecting safety net programs, and improving access to quality public education of health care and healthy foods. First elected in 2008, she represents the people of the 11th Congressional District of Ohio. Our last, finally, Leah Daughtry. Daughtry. Sorry. The Reverend Leah Daughtry is a national Daughtry, I'm sorry, is a national recognized teacher, preacher, speaker, organizer, leader, and political strategist. Throughout her career, she has sought to bring sound principles, leadership, business, and management practices to organizations that seek to enhance and improve the lives of people with and for whom she whom they were. She is Chief Executive Officer for Officer of the 2016 Democratic Nationals. Chief Executive Officer As CEO of the D Democratic National Convention Committee, reprising the role she served in 2008 and making her first her the first person in the Democratic <coughs> Party history to hold the position twice. I know that's now, right. Now you know these women that's, these black women at the helm all of them have the credentials yes, they to do. be able to do it. And they're going to get Hillary in there. They're going to get her in because they... Amen. I have confidence in my black sister. I do too. All right. That's our story about uh, Marshall, Representative Marshall Fudge, Donna Brazil, Leah Daughtry, 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 Daughtry. 
and OSS. Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves. The Black real Hero. Long Ranger or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the real Miss B said the real Long Ranger or not. <laughs> if y'all could get to uh I don't know if they show these kind of old pictures. I think they are showing them on certain Oh, they have that on a channels. documentary on PBS. That's a documentary about Bass Reeves. No, I ain't talking about him. I'm talking about the Long Ranger. Oh. So they can see these differences. Oh, the movies. Yeah. Oh. The series that they had. I think they on um, Comcast. They got these old stations you can go. Yeah, to. the old movies you you can watch in black and white. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know what they are. So anyway, guess go check it out for yourself. You got the internet. Go there. Uh, and find the Long Ranger and find Bass Reeves and do mm -hmm. your own comparison mm -hmm. and then make up your own mind. That's easy to true. Uh, Marshall, <laughs> Long Ranger, or not? Okay? All right, so Taurus Black History Corner Internet programs come to you via satellite at allpointstv.com. You can watch our program every second and fourth Monday of the month, unless the day falls on the holiday, starting at 3.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Also, be sure to watch What's Going On with Political Pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m. If you would like to get more information regarding Satoris Black History Corner's theme song, Be Proud to Be Black, you can contact TP Productions at 810-962-3258. That's 810-962-3258, TP Productions. As always, I'd like to say thank you very much to all of you who have watched our program today. And we definitely hope that you have learned something new and inspirational about our story. Amen. Make sure you get ready and get out the vote on Tuesday, November 8th, because it's coming soon. Absolutely. If you don't vote, young people, you don't count. Remember, this as you go about your day, young people, Second Chronicles 2015 says, Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Dismayed is also known as discouraged because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. And I'm talking about the things that's happening to us today, but it's been happening for centuries. Until next time, as we like to always say, know that we are strong and resilient people and that no one can keep us down. And I want to say something else. I've been talking to young people, and you know they're actually afraid of, the, of what's going on. They have this fear that's been put in them, and that fear got to go. They should not be afraid. They should not be afraid about anything, about going anywhere, about being afraid of the police, none of that. Mm -hmm. that should, that's got to go. Anyway, I just have to throw that little thing in there because I've been talking to them and that's all I'm hearing. Well, they're they afraid. know what they're facing. Yeah. Yeah, and they have no recourse behind it. They sure don't. And I would also like y'all to understand and go and, and uh, get the information about the Fourth Amendment, which was thrown, we were thrown under the bus because the, the United States Supreme Court gave the right for the police to do the things that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So go check it out for yourself. It's the Fourth Amendment, okay? So anyway, and that's from the highest level, United States Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. All right, also, to always be true to yourself and always keep on keeping on with us, Amani, which means peace, peace in Swahili.
you about? We gotta love each other, stop killing each other. 